Be Welcome to class number 11 of our chiller course for beginners prepared by the chiller world the channel of water chillers and industrial refrigeration. And on the screen we have an animation system that represents a water cooled chiller we can logically see its main parts we have in the lower part the compressor with the number one the main parts we are going to have on the right we have at this point the water cooled condenser we have at this point the cooling tower this is the circuit to cool the condenser we have at the top here we have a filter to protect the system and an expansion valve and on the left the evaporator in the first classes of this course by the way if it is the first time you are visiting as well Here's the link to start the chiller course for beginners we had commented that the chiller was then in charge of receiving the heat and that heat is received in the evaporator and through the movement of the refrigerant. We take it to the condenser and being in the condenser the movement of the water from the ambient water circuit takes it to the tower and in the cooling tower. With these powerful fans, we are able to definitively remove the heat from the system and send it to the environment. This process is repeated, repeated, and repeated. In this way we can ensure that we have a machine that is responsible for cooling a flow of water water that reaches the evaporator water that comes out. We had commented many times that the temperature differential of this flow of water for room conditioning is usually around 10 degrees Fahrenheit 5 degrees Celsius we explained it many times in the first class as well. In this video we are going to talk about the chiller that has the option of heat recovery it is a very interesting subject. Because as we know we have spent years it is very fashionable and the subject of energy saving will continue to be fashionable everything we can do to return an efficient installation will be important it is increasingly important and the refrigeration and air conditioning technician must relate to these issues with the issue of efficient plants. Because the time will come for inefficient plants. Even though they are reliable even though they still have a useful life appreciable plants that are not efficient will be terminated due to electrical consumption as these chilled water plants are refrigeration systems that are projected to have a long life. We must take this into account a lot and in turn this class will be useful for us to understand how the circuit works when presented with the opportunity to do some maintenance. So, how does the heat recovery circuit work? Chiller with heat recovery, we are of course going to give a basic idea of the heat. We said that the frozen water is removed from it at this point and it is taken here to the condenser and the condenser is taken over here here we have the heat. We already have it in the condenser well. The idea is going to be to capture that heat and not send it to the environment but to use it for another function. Let's imagine that we are in a building and the building of course has offices with air conditioning or people who need air conditioning at low temperatures but also for example it has bathrooms where hot water is needed for the shower. In the past, all this was going to be managed by a boiler system or is still managed by a boiler system. This hot water system, but what if we take advantage of this heat that is here in the white condenser? Instead of throwing it into the environment, what if we don't throw it into the environment but throw it into the hot water circuit of the building? Well, the idea is good because we are going to save a lot in the operation of the hot water circuit. We are observing here, here we have a post on the Mundo Chiller page about heat recovery, chiller with heat recovery. Let's see how the water cooled chiller with heat recovery works, that is, very similar to the chiller we are seeing look at what we have on the screen. On the screen we are seeing the first alternative of the circuit. This circuit is a circuit where the exchanger we are going to call the exchanger that part of the system that will allow us to recover the heat. Notice that in this system the heat the heat exchanger is located outside the condenser. It is outside, independent of the condenser. That is, it is not in thermal exchange with the refrigerant if it is not receiving the water that goes to the tower and we have the water circuit that we use for heating separately and this is where the exchange is made in this part that I am pointing out. This is where the exchange is going to be made. Let's look closely at the figure. Then we have the chiller refrigeration circuit we have the cooling water circuit to the condenser because it is a water cooled chiller and we have a separate exchanger that captures the heat through which the water that cooled the chiller passes and this flow of water has the energy that is taken from the chiller and we can pass it on to the heating circuit. This it would be one of the variants that we can present. If you want to acquire more advanced knowledge about chillers and industrial refrigeration plants, you can visit mundochiller.com and take our private programs for the training of professionals in the sector. Every month we are opening courses with new groups, online modality. I think the graph speaks for itself of what the distribution of the exchanger and the position would be like, so the idea that this system has then the exchanger outside the condenser should be clear. 
Now too we can have the variant talking again about the heat recovery system with a water cooled chiller now look at the variant that we can now have the water from the heating circuit. The circuit that is used to heat if it does not go directly to the chiller condenser. The the exchanger that we had before, which was in charge of intermediary, no longer exists, but the water that we are going to use for the heating circuit. To heat it, we pass it directly through the chiller condenser. Now we are going to see a water-cooled chiller plant with heat recovery and we are going to see how we can have this distribution notice that on the left we have three chillers. The three chillers are the ones on top, they are cooled by water. All the chillers are cooled by water and in the lower part of the distribution we have another chiller. But that chiller that is downstairs is a chiller that works with a heat recovery system and if we look at the figure we can see how the chilled water comes out of the chiller. See that it comes out of this point, it goes to the application, it reaches a fan coil, some air handling units example that reaches 7 degrees Celsius for an example, it leaves the exchangers at 12 degrees and the chiller returns through this route, the chiller returns through this route but this chiller that has heat recovery also returns, these three do not have it, this one below does have it, the heat recovery system. So the water would enter at 12, but the chiller also has the capacity to cool and from 12 it goes to 7, and from 12 it goes to 7 in this, so 12 goes to 7 in this one, from 12 to 7 in this one and we have a system now the circuit that cools the condensers of these three chillers as an independent circuit. Note that it is independent and here we do not have a heat recovery system we have the water that goes to the cooling tower, a normal circuit, while the bottom one, note that the bottom one, the water that cools the condenser does not go to the cooling tower. We can see that the water that cools the condenser is not going to the cooling tower, it goes to the application, it enters the chiller condenser. Note that it enters the chiller condenser the heat from the chiller condenser receives it and now we send it to the hot water circuit that we have here in this part below this would be an installation with a chiller that has a heat recovery system, all cooled by water. The three above are in charge of the cooling part only the condenser is cooled by the cooling tower and the chiller that we have in the lower part, that chiller yes, it has the particularity that the water enters directly into the condenser, it receives heat from the condenser and we can send that heat to a hot water circuit to perform the different functions that are needed, the water can have the temperature we need or it can that it still lacks more temperature if the water lacks more temperature, we can send it to a boiler to finish heating, which we have won. Since we have one that the boiler is not receiving the water at room temperature, it is already receiving it with a preheating this will bring considerable savings to the heating circuit and therefore to the entire building. In the long run all of this is to keep the entire building air conditioned with the temperatures that we need. Air cooled heat recovery chiller, can there be an air cooled heat recovery chiller? Yes, if there is, if there is a chiller with recovery, of course if it exists, it is marketed and works as we are showing below in the figure. Let's look at the figure here we can see to the left, we can have some boilers, right, some boilers and here on the right we have some air handling units notice this chiller we can basically summarize the way it works like this, when hot water is needed, when hot water is needed and the conditions are right then the chiller becomes a chilled chiller by water. Let's see that the condenser has fans. Here we can see it in the figure but also in this detail we can see that the condenser is also cooled by water. That circuit of the water cooled condenser will work when, when heat is needed, when heating is needed there is no cooling tower in this circuit, there is no cooling tower, but the water is carried, collects the heat and takes it to the boiler for preheating and the boiler would then work with less gas consumption than the chiller then it would work with the fans in the condenser as a normal circuit where we are supplying chilled water to these units to these fan koi, to these air handling units. Do not work on the condenser, it can be seen that the water is going to be diverted and the boilers can receive hot water with preheating, but in case you do not work in which the chiller is not working for some reason, then the boiler will have the ability to put the system to work independently of the chiller and we hope then in class number 12 of this basic chiller course for beginners.